Hello everyone and thanks for joining our video on what the Bible says about being unequally yoked. If you have been a Christian for some time and regularly attending church or hearing sermons about this topic, you probably at one point have heard the phrase, do not be unequally yoked. Now perhaps this was just filtered through your ears at the time and you placed no consideration on the phrase, but now you are in a time of life where maybe you are in a new relationship or you're contemplating a new one and one of your friends gave you this cautionary phrase. Now if it's bothering your conscience and you have conflicts within about this phrase, this video will help to sort out and explain what the Bible says about it. Let's first get a grip on the word yoked. In this first image is a representation of the instrument put on two animals for usually some farming or cultivating purposes but it serves us well in understanding the phrase. In the next two images, it's easy to see that when equally yoked of two similar animals, like these two here in the, the top picture, with similar behavior patterns, they can accomplish what the farmer has in mind. The first pair are about as identical as can be, but the same nature can be found within the second pair as well. Now on to a quite dissimilar image. Can you just imagine what these two unequal animals could not accomplish given the same environment? It just isn't going to work, no matter how hard you try. Now you might be thinking, this illustration is just over the top. That is not my situation. Or there may be thoughts running through your head that you have enough in common with the other person. But friend, whether you realize it or not, the person inside rarely ever shows itself early on and in the long run, the real person is going to eventually come out. Now, biblically, the phrase that many use to lovingly warn their friends and loved ones comes from a verse found in 2 Corinthians. Now, Paul had written two letters to this church at Corinth, and in the early part of chapter 6 of the second letter, he was urging them to show they can commend themselves, in other words, prove themselves as believers by listing several examples in verses 4 through 6, by great endurance, and afflictions, hardships, calamities, and so on, as you can see here that I have listed. So one might ask, what does this have to do with unequally yoked? Well, after Paul gives several more examples in the next few verses, if you want to look at your own Bible and read those verses after verse 6, he goes on to show afterwards with warnings and illustrations how we have been called out from evil, wickedness, etc., starting with the key verse, in 14, which I have here at the bottom, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? And the next few verses give other illustrations of wrong partnerships such as idols and unclean things. In essence, verse 14 is speaking about the church as a body. And the application is to every individual believer. And this applies to all relationships that can draw you away from serving and growing in the Lord. Now, your flesh may argue with this by throwing out arguments such as, even though we're only dating, perhaps they will come around to faith in Jesus because of my witness. This on the surface sounds honorable, but it really is not very wise. King Solomon was called wiser than all the men of the East and greater than all the wisdom of Egypt Yet he succumbed to his lust and married pagan women. See 1 Kings 11, the whole chapter. Tells you about this. And because of this sin, he suffered punishment from God. And the intermarriages with pagans caused him to go astray from his worship of the Lord. Another argument that may come from your flesh is, My relationship with the Lord is so strong, I would never worship pagan gods. The lesson that needs to be learned from Solomon is, That even though he was in the line of David, was inspired by God to write several books of the Old Testament and was given more wisdom than any man before or since other than Jesus, he still fell into worshiping false gods. Verses 3 through 5 of 1 Kings 11 speaks to this. He had 700 wives, it tells us, who were princesses and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not wholly true to the Lord his God. 
So as we can see right here in the text, King Solomon, godly man, look what happened with getting involved with ungodly women. So rather than listen to the tug of our flesh, we need to listen to the Holy Spirit and give heed to what the Bible says. Now there's not one verse that can be pointed to that specifically says you can't date or court an unbeliever. And yes, there have been a few exceptions where the unbeliever became saved after marrying the believer, but that is the exception to the rule. And you do not want to be putting yourself in the high-risk category of a stress-filled marriage because you have faith and your spouse doesn't. Or even worse, you compromise in the marriage to keep the peace and your walk with the Lord becomes very weak. That's what happens more often than not. Neither of these results is what you cannot possibly see now, but they are very likely if you married an unsaved person. The principle of being unequally yoked applies to every aspect of our lives. If you have mostly unsaved close friends and few or no saved close friends, you really need to examine these scriptures. It's important to be a witness to the loss. Yes, this is true, but that is not the same as spending the majority of your time as close friends with unbelievers. And this includes not just those you are dating, courting, whatever term you want to call your relationship. I hope this video has been a light of encouragement in understanding on God's truth from his word.